I, I really want to uh, uh, focus on the um, uh, on the economy and uh, the gold standard. You're one of the only people that is talking about uh, the return of the gold standard. It was, I mean, honestly, uh, I mean, Ron, I, I you know, geez. I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but you know what? At times, I believe I am a conspiracy <laughs> theorist because there's a lot of stuff that just, if you read history, and you go back all the way to Woodrow Wilson, you can see that the, the foundation was laid for one world government. The foundation was laid for socialism. And I, I really, truly believe that uh, these, you know, Hillary Clinton says she's not a liberal. She's, quote, a modern-day progressive. Anybody who knows what a progressive is, that is a nightmare. It is, it is the road to socialism. Do you believe that there is any... Uh, intentional intent to take us down these roads and and bankrupt us because anybody with a clue would know what's coming around the corner with Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. And I don't know how you can say I want to do universal health care as well. You know, I, I guess there's a lot of evidence for that, and it's awfully tempting. I always try to say, well, it's uh, they're doing it out of ignorance and lack of understanding of how the market economy works, rather than saying, oh, I'd like to bring on a depression. I, I think they actually believe that they're good managers. Alan Greenspan once told me, he when, because he used to be a, a gold standard person, and he had, he's written very well about that in his early years. But he says, no, he says, uh, we, we central bankers have learned to make paper money act as if it's gold. You know, they, they come to believe in themselves yeah. that there is, there is good and they can manage as well as the market. And I told him after that, I said, you know, if you do that, this will be the first time in all of history that anybody could do that, you know, to make paper money act like gold money. But, you know, you should never be embarrassed about the gold standard because uh, one of our most uh, favorite presidents, Ronald Reagan, told me personally once, he says, you know, he says, I'm interested in gold because he says, uh, if you study history, you find out that any great nation that has gotten off the gold standard will no longer remain great. And we just got off the gold standard totally in 1971. And if you look at the statistics from 71, when it comes to spending and deficits and inflation and the value of the dollar, I mean, they're dramatic. And well, why did, why did, why I, I just want to make sure we wake up before the dollar totally collapses, because that is a real tragedy if we let that happen. How, um, uh, how come Ronald Reagan didn't put us on the gold standard? I mean, if anybody had the clout to do it, how, how come he didn't do it? And if you were president, how would you propose we would do that? Well, it, it's not easy, but what I would do is not want to close down the Federal Reserve, because that is uh, dramatic, and it wouldn't happen. It would be chaotic, too. All I want to do is legalize the Constitution, let you and you and me use gold if we want, which means you have to remove sales taxes and capital gains tax off gold and let let it circulate, just like currency circulate well, around would... the world. So if you want to save for your kids' education, you can put them in gold bonds, and if the dollar, if you bet in the dollar, is going to go down more rapidly than, than the price of education goes up, you could save in gold. You could get paid in gold. And okay. if if we well, hang on, hang on, then, on. then paper will not be used anymore. Wait a minute, but what you're proposing, they you're this close to being arrested. If you, I mean, if you went and actually did that, they already have the Liberty Dollar guys. Yeah. They have they have tried to arrest the guy and say you are trying to compete with the currency of the United States of America. You, this is what you're talking about now. You can be arrested for. Yeah, so the Constitution is being violated by law, and it's supposed to be the other way around. And this is why I use the term, this legalized the Constitution, this legalized gold and silver, which is in the Constitution. So you would have to change the tax code. You'd have to persuade the Congress to do this. Uh, but it would be less chaotic. This is exactly what I proposed in the early 1980s when I was on the Gold Commission, competing currencies. This is well written up by Hayek, the Austrian economist, and he, he thinks you can have competing currencies easier today than in the past because the world's always having competing currencies. Just allow gold and silver to do the same thing. When you were on my uh, program on television, you said something that I didn't correct because I didn't, I mean, it sounded so outlandish, but I, I let it go because I didn't have the facts, and you sounded so convinced of it that I thought, hmm, i got to check into that, and I'll correct it the next time he's on, or I'll connect it, uh, correct it the next day. What you said was, if we got rid of the income tax, the government would still take about the same amount of money in as they had 10 years ago. Approximately. We looked into it. And it's accurate. Can you explain that? And how 
do we get that message out to people? Well, it's just that the growth of spending is so rapid that people don't realize that freezing budgets would be a tremendous benefit, and that's one of my proposals in my economic reforms. It's just uh, it's freeze non-defense and non-entitlement spending, which would go a long way to coming to the balance. I think uh, $1 trillion less 10 years ago, I think government was adequate size 10 years ago. But we have this notion that everything has to have perpetual growth. Just think about our friends in the Republican Party that used to run against the Department of Education. What did we do when we finally got in charge? We doubled the size of the Department of Education. We create new departments. We never slow up. Do we do anything to unwind the dependency of the farmers on centralized planning for farmers, which pushes cost of uh, food up, you know, it it just doesn't make any sense. The people demand change, as they did in 94 in the year 2000. We didn't produce it. No wonder they're aggravated with us. Wow. But, uh, wait, 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 we, need, hey, hey. we need to at least freeze things without cutting anything. Hang on just a second. The people demand change. Well, the people are demanding change now so much. Uh, the voice of the people are so, is so clear that everybody has, uh, as their slogan or on their little sign, their yard signs, either change or, in your case, revolution, uh, and it is... I mean, it's everywhere. Everybody knows we want change. And yet the people are going to the polls and they are voting for Hillary Clinton or John McCain. Yeah. How do you explain that? Well, it's not easily explained, but uh, I think there's a lot of uh, information lacking from these people. A lot of people, you know, you and I and others talk about, you know, the issues and the politics of it, but, you know, Probably 80 or 90 percent of the people feel like it's their patriotic duty to vote, but they only think about voting about two or three days before the election. We think everybody's interested. You know, we get on a stage and have a debate. We think, boy, everybody's paying attention to us. 80 or 90 percent of people are looking at football games, but they still feel like they have to vote, and it'll be very vague information. But all I can say is the people that support me do a lot of reading, and they know what's going on, and they know what they're supporting, and they know about the economic issues, and they know about the gold standard, and they know they don't like the income tax. So that's a little bit different. And the other thing is is uh, they also know that I've always voted the way I've talked, and right now there's a lot of, uh, a lot of disenchantment with people saying one thing and doing something else. Will you uh, run as a third candidate if you uh, don't get the nomination? No. No, I don't want to do that. I have no plans in doing this. This is a tough enough job right now. <laughs> really? Why is that? You don't think? I mean, if it was McCain and Clinton, you don't think there would be a lot of people going, "Well, geez, I can't vote for I, I think it's the system that bothers me the most. Uh, you know, the job of getting on the balance. I'd, I'd probably spend uh, millions of dollars. Uh, and half of my effort just wondering if I could even get on the ballot, and the debates wouldn't be available to me. And uh, you probably wouldn't have me on my on your program or something if I, yes, I <laughs> wasn't would. in a major party. No, yes, I would. <laughs> would you? Okay. Yes, I would. Yes, I would. I, you know, I, 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 um, I'm, I'm very offended by some of your um, uh, supporters because they always say that I, you know, I won't listen to you or I won't have you. I'm probably the guy on talk radio, mainstream talk radio that will at least say, I agree with you on a lot of things. I just disagree with you vehemently on others. Yeah, I appreciate um, that. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, we just, I just happen to disagree with you, but I respect you, sir, for your opinion. I, I've said this, uh, you know, behind your back, so let me say it to your face. Mm -hmm. I think you are the closest we have running to a founding father. You seem to be the only guy who has actually read the Federalist Papers. So I, I appreciate your efforts, sir. Well, thank you very much. You bet. Uh, we will uh, talk to you again. Uh, talk to you again. Thanks Best for having me. You bet. Bye bye. bye, -bye.